Let's now take a look at what's happening in the camp of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's rivals. The much talked about India alliance still has a lot to do. The opposition alliance of 28 parties is yet to declare even their prime ministerial candidate. Seat sharing and common minimum program are also far from sight. In this backdrop, the Indian National Congress, which is also the main opposition party in the country, has announced a flagship campaign. Congress leader and member of parliament Rahul Gandhi will embark on another countrywide campaign from January 14th to March 20th. The campaign will be called the Bharat Nyay Yatra, which loosely translates to India's March for Justice. The march on foot will take place between Manipur in the northeastern part of India to Mumbai in the west, also known as the financial capital of the country. The Yatra will be undertaken mostly by bus with short stretches of foot march. It will cover more than 6,200 kilometers across 14 states. Now, starting from Manipur, the Yatra will traverse through Nagaland, Assam, Meghalaya, West Bengal, Bihar, Jharkhand, Orissa, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan and Gujarat. It will finally conclude in the India's financial capital of Mumbai in Maharashtra. As you can see, the plan is to cover the entire, the breadth of India from east to west. Rahul Gandhi embarked on a similar yatra last year as well, when he covered the entire length of the country from south to north. The Congress leader, along with 120 volunteers, walked from Kanyakumari at the southern tip of India to the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The journey of 4,080 kilometers took almost 144 days. It was called the Bharat Joro Yatra or Unify India March. The Bharat Joro Yatra began on 7 September of 2022 and passed through 12 states and the two union territories starting from Tamil Nadu. The Yatra traversed through Kerala, Karnataka, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Haryana, National Capital of Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab and Himachal Pradesh before finally ending in Jammu and Kashmir. Now, many analysts believe that the Bharat Joro Yatra was widely popular in the states it travelled through. The campaign was considered widely popular on social media as well. And yet, when it comes to electoral gains, the march left much to be desired. While Congress won state assembly elections in Karnataka and Telangana, its recent losses in states of Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan have exposed the electoral effectiveness of the initiative. The Bharat Nyaya Yatra is different than its earlier version. Following recent setbacks in assembly elections, the morale of Congress party workers is definitely low and there is a prevailing sentiment within the party that winning in 2024 is a distant dream. A marathon yatra at this time could provide the much-needed oxygen to re-energize the party's grassroots workers. Now for more on this and to decode Indian politics for us, we are being joined by Dr. Makarand R. Prajanpe, author and professor JNU from New Delhi. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. Happy to be here. My first question to you is, the BJP is, we are getting reports that it's going to uh, announce its candidates for 2024 general elections prior than it was expected. Do you think that the general elections in India might be held prior than we were expecting? Oh, that's a billion dollar, or should I say billion vote question. <laughs> uh, let me just tell you that nobody really knows what the prime minister is thinking. He keeps his cards close to his chest and he's surprised critics and admirers time and time again. So it's pointless predicting. Also, remember how the India Shining campaign of Atal Bihari Vajpayee, whose uh, you know, anniversary we just celebrated, came up a cropper. In fact, the BJP lost the elections 
after advancing the date. So we can't say anything about when the elections will actually be held. But uh, it is true, I think, that the BJP may announce its candidates because it wants familiar faces uh, already to be circulating in their uh, constituencies, going back there and campaigning well before uh, you know the dates are actually announced. Now, there's another aspect to this that uh, some commentators are observing that after the Ram Mandir is inaugurated on the 22nd of January, the party is going to assess the mood of the nation. And uh, if they think that they've got the momentum required to push through uh, before the opposition reorganizes or makes any more plans uh, for a counter narrative, they, uh, some people say they may actually go in for an earlier poll. But as I said, it's very, very hard right. to predict. What's very clear, though, what is very clear is, as you yourself said, they are in mission mode. They're not taking things lightly. And they want to get more than 50% of the popular vote. Remember last election in 2019, they got 37%. And the NDA, that is with their alliance, added, they got 45%. So, or more than 40%. So, I think that uh, they really want a huge boost to their campaign, uh, both in terms of vote share and in terms of the people elected. Right, right. Professor, if we could come to the rival camp now, to surprise to many of the experts, Congress has now launched a full-on campaign uh, just a few months before the general elections. And this is not the first time we are seeing it. We also saw Bharat Joro Yatra this year that started in January of this year. Do you think this kind of uh, initiative actually works for the voters in India? I don't know about voters, but it will certainly work for the party. I think that the Bharat Joro Yatra despite the critics and those who mocked it, uh, was not an entire failure, was not an utter failure. It did bolster up uh, uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi's profile and won him some admirers and friends. I think that uh, the Bharat Nyaya Yatra, the India Justice Rally or uh, Journey, will also, I think, help uh, Rahul Gandhi. But will it translate into votes? I'm not really sure because the Congress seems clueless to offer an alternative to the BJP narrative. Uh, it seems to me that instead of constantly criticizing the Prime Minister or the BJP, it should actually offer an alternative. It should offer better ideas and it should also demonstrate in states which it has won recently, like Karnataka, and uh, even more recently in Telangana, which was a massive victory in fact, a surprise victory. It should Absolutely. demonstrate good governance. It should demonstrate good governance right. and uh, actually, yeah, tamping Professor, down on corruption. Right. Professor, sorry to interject very quickly. You said that you're not sure if it will work for the voters, the march, but definitely for the party members. But don't you think any party at this moment would rather focus on the voters and not on the party leaders like Rahul Gandhi? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, a bit of this and a bit of that because the Congress needs to galvanize its cadres. Remember, the margin of victory for the BJP in several constituencies has not been very large. So the Congress does remain uh, the principal opposition party in India nationwide. So if they can translate this yatra into some key wins in closely contested constituencies, it will actually benefit them. But more than that, they need uh, a combined strategy for India, for that alliance called India. They need an alternative narrative and they need to focus on some positives. Like what can they do rather than just criticizing the government and, uh, you know, trying to wipe out the image of their being a dynastic or Absolutely. a corrupt or a nation breaking type of party, uh, you know, captured by the woke uh, the, the kind of fringe liberal left type of, uh, uh, you know, advisors and uh, ideologues. Right. The Congress should return to its heritage of being a centrist party, uh, which is actually attractive to the majority of the voters, not just to, to the small fringe on the All outside. Right. All right, Professor. Thank you so much for getting us all those insights. We are completely out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you.